Welcome learners to my session on planning and managing science education at the upper primary level. It's an overview of planning. My name is Russell D'Souza and I come from Goa. Well, the, the structure of our session is this way. We will look at the learning indicators as prescribed by NCF 2005 for this particular level. We will look at the different levels of planning, namely the annual or year plan, unit plan and the lesson plan. So, science is all around us. The fact that I am talking to you and the different technological gadgets around me is all science. The clothes that I am wearing and the oxygen that I am taking in at this point of time is an all an understanding by science. So science is a discipline of scientific inquiry which emphasizes on two components. They are curricular expectations and the specific pedagogical processes. Now, learners remember that every subject has its own specific curricular expectations. And curricular expectations are those expectations that are placed on a learner to develop certain skills, certain attributes, or certain competences. For instance, when I look at science, the child is supposed to develop the ability to think, to reason, to question, to problem solve, to apply theory to practice, to apply what he or she has learned in the classroom to the real world outside and to carry the experiences that he has encountered in the real world outside to the classroom so that the others can also learn. Remember that when we look at science, it is to develop the faculty of a, of a child to understand the beauty and the, of the world around him or her. And the specific pedagogical processes is basically concerned with the type of learning experiences that we create for a learner so that he or she is able to develop these different competences that the curriculum places on the child. So the learning indicators corresponding to class 6, 7 and 8 as envisaged in NCF 2005. It says that the child should explore the surrounding and share experiences with others. So explore the surroundings and share experiences with others. So go and look around you. Look at the plants and classify them. Look at the soil. What is it made up of? What does it contain? It contains different organisms, those which are macroscopic and also microscopic. And also, have a look at the different types of soil because children who come from different places have an exposure to different kinds of soil. The next one is ask questions that lead to investigation. How do fruits ripen? Are they ripening naturally or are they made to ripen, that is forced ripening? Are chemicals applied? So, investigate, find out. How does a rain gauge work? What are maximum and minimum thermometers? And how do they work? So the moment you throw these questions, you will learn to find answers to these questions. The third one is plan and conduct a variety of activities. Do animals sweat? And when I say animals, an example of cat, dogs, etc. Do they sweat? Why are antiperspirants not to be made use of? We, we, uh, we should be against antiperspirants. But why? Find out. How can I explain the concept of net forces? So conduct and plan a variety of activities. Then records and reports observations and also relationships. How would you discriminate between transparent, translucent and opaque materials? Why does a red object appear red and why does a yellow object appear yellow? And why does a green object appear green and a blue blue? So what is the reason? 
What are your observations? What are the relationships? Discussion. Present logical explanation. Connect science to daily life. Display innovation, creativity and problem solving ability. So these are the different indicators that NCF prescribes. So now as a teacher, you have a huge responsibility. So if a child is going to develop all these competencies or all these abilities, then how can you contribute? What can you do? So what do I do as a teacher? What do I teach? When do I teach? Why do I teach? And how do I teach? I have the entire curriculum and a component of the curriculum that is a syllabus before me. How do I approach the syllabus? When do I start teaching? How do I start teaching? Do I take the first unit first and the last unit last? What sort of learning resources do I need to make use of? How do I structure assessment? How do I structure learning outcomes? How do I, how do I link learning outcomes and assessment? How do I plan for revision? How do I source a variety of instructional and teaching media? So now we have a very big responsibility before us and that is how do I go about looking at the syllabus? So, we are looking at planning. So, planning is the most important phase, my dear teachers, in your life as a teacher teaching a particular class. If you do not plan, then you have nothing systematic that is happening. You have to be planning every single thing. And so, today we will look at how planning is supposed to take place. So, planning takes place at three different levels. Now, I want you to look very carefully at this graphic. What do you observe? Now, if you look very carefully, you will observe two things in here. If you look at the text from down to top, you will see that the text is increasing in font size. Right? I'm sure that's your observation. And the second thing is, uh, you also have the color codes. You have blue, green and red. So if I look at the whole graphic which is there, this indicates the levels of planning. So right down, we have lesson plans. Now lesson plans which fits into the unit plan and the unit plan which fits into the annual plan or the year plan. And so if I come from top to down, when I look at the annual plan or the year plan, it is the superset, it is the big picture that is before us. The annual plan or the year plan is the big picture before us. And inside this big picture or the superset, we have the unit plan that is shown in green. And inside within that, we have the lesson plan. So, the annual plan or the unit or the year plan is a superset and the unit plan and lesson plan are the subsets. So the annual or year plan, that is a long range plan with a year that is kept in mind. So we do planning for a year and that's the reason why the word annual is given to it. Now what you see here on screen is the format of the annual plan which is prescribed in the NIOS course book. So have a look at this very carefully and you will find a tabular format. And in the tabular format you have units, you have the subunits and then you have the number of periods which are dedicated for different activities like teaching, revision and assessment and the total number of periods and also the month. That means what is the annual plan focusing on? It is focusing on the unit. The subunits which are there in that particular unit, the number of periods that are required for the teaching of those subunits, okay? The, num the number of revision periods that you can have subunit wise and for assessment, how many periods will you allot and the total number of periods for that particular unit and the month. So, 
An annual or a year plan is a course outline in a particular subject for a particular class for a whole year. So if we are in the year 2018, then you will have the annual plan for the year 2018 till 2019. It gives a structure to the content, that is the academic activities, to be undertaken during the specified academic year. Have a look at this. In here you will find uh, snapshots of, uh, of, the, of the content of class uh, 8 te uh, science textbook. And if you look very carefully, you will see chapter 1 which is on nutrition in plants, chapter 2 which is on nutrition in animals. And if you come right down to chapter 10 here, you have respiration in organisms, you have transportation in plants and animals, and you have reproduction in plants. So these are all units. Now I need to caution you. When I say units, we, uh, you will have some course books that will say chapters or some will say topics. It means nothing but units. So could I take these five different units which are marked in red and sequence them? So I'll have five sequence and they of course follow a logical order. I want you to look at chapter 7 and chapter 8. Again here, there is a logical order that is followed. If I can read it to you, uh, chapter 7 is on weather, climate and adaptations of animals to climate and chapter 8 talks about winds, storms and cyclones. So these two units, they follow each other and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which are marked in red, they also follow each other. So, it, we structure content that will be covered during the whole year. So the annual plan is formulated at the start of the academic year, not in the middle of the year. So if you are starting in the month of June, you should have your annual plan ready by April or mid-May so that you have every single thing in the plan. So it is followed, formulated at the start of the academic year by considering the units to be covered in science and the total number of periods that are available during the year. So you have to be very, very careful. It's a very systematic exercise, my dear learners. Now, the, so, the syllabus is divided into a number of units and then the time is allotted to each unit in terms of the number of periods for teaching, revision and assessment. Now, I want you to have a look at this tabular format. Now, this tabular format is, is, gives you a small idea of a annual plan. I have taken just one unit and the unit is on force and pressure. So if you look at the subunits carefully, you will see force, push or pull and for that I am taking one teaching period. The next subunit is forces arise due to interaction. For that again I have one teaching period. The third subunit is exploring forces and I have two teaching periods for that. The next subunit is uh, force can change the state of motion and I have one teaching period. And the last one is forces can change the shape of objects and I have one teaching period that is dedicated here as well. For revision I have kept two periods. For assessment, I have kept two periods and the total number of periods for this much of content in this particular unit is 10 classroom periods. And this will be done in the month of August 2018. So I hope this gives you a sufficient idea of, of what an annual plan means. Now, you need to be cautious when you're allotting time to a unit. So analyze the content, chunk it, chunk it means break it down. Identify the level of difficulty or complexity of the unit. Or sometimes if you have related units, be very careful when you're combining these units. If you remember, I told you about those five units which were, which were encircled in red. Those are related units. The second one, is the importance of that content in subsequent learning. For example, chemical changes and then they learn in higher classes in relation to, uh, to a chemical effects of electric current and so on. Force and pressure they learn in class 7 and it continues. 
So you need to emphasize on these content areas. The next one is the type of resources and the learning strategies that will be made use of, whether the strategies are online or offline, demonstrations, out of learning, out of class learning, experiments. So if you have many or some of these, then you require to dedicate more time to teaching. Okay, and also if there are holidays or vacations that can affect time. So you need to be very, very careful. The next one we look at is a unit plan. So the unit plan is narrower than the annual plan. The focus is on identifying units and doing a content analysis to obtain subunits for every unit. This happens in the case of the annual plan. However, the focus of the unit plan is on content analysis of the subunits so that subunit wise planning may be done and lesson plans can be appropriately constructed. Now have a look at this graphic and you will see the annual plan right on top and in the annual plan we look at units and subunits. The unit plan will now look at detailed subunits. What I have done here is I have subunit 1 to subunit 6. SU refers to a subunit, all right? And if you look right below, you will find L1, L2, L3, which are nothing but lesson plans, okay? And they are a part of the first subunit, SU1, because that has that green glow around it. And if you look at L1, L2, and L3, it has that orange glow around it, and it sits under subunit 4. That means every subunit further has lesson plans under it. So this is the format of the unit plan according to your NIOS curriculum. And in here you will see subunits, content analysis. When I say content analysis, you break down content and you find which are the terms, which are the, con which are the uh, concepts, which are the facts, if there's a theory or a principle, what is there in that particular content? the learning objectives or the learning outcomes. Today we look at the revised cognitive taxonomy which is also known as the revised Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, you have the cognitive processes dimension that begins with remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate and create. I will come to that a little later. And you have the teaching learning uh, methodology or the strategies and the evaluation format that will be made use of. Uh, very briefly, I will look at the revised cognitive taxonomy. So if you look very carefully, the revised cognitive taxonomy has two dimensions and that's the reason why it's called a two-dimensional taxonomy. One dimension that is along the, the horizontal axis or the y-axis is known as a cognitive processes dimension and is concerned with six cognitive levels beginning with remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate and create. And if I look at the vertical axis or the y-axis, then that is a knowledge dimension which again has a hierarchy beginning with factual knowledge, conceptual knowledge, procedural knowledge and metacognitive knowledge. And so ultimately we have a matrix and so the matrix would, uh, would, would read something like this. It would be remember factual knowledge, remember conceptual knowledge, remember procedural knowledge and remember metacognitive knowledge and it continues up the hierarchy. Now the unit plan includes a series of actions. So they are a careful content analysis of every subunit. Note subunits uh, that are listed in the year or annual plan. The second is formulating learning outcomes for every subunit. Third is the instructional procedures. Instructional procedures would include uh, teaching points, teaching learning activities, methods and media. And the fourth one is an objective assessment to measure learning. This is an example of the unit plan that I put for you. Now if you recall the, the annual plan that I just spoke to you of and we had listed the subunits. What I have done is I have listed the subunits now in the, in the unit plan. So you have four push or pull and the concept here is push, pull, lift, throw. So the child understands the meaning of all these four different actions or terms and if at all these actions are performed, then the child is able to apply what he has understood 
in relation to these actions and say that this is a push, pull, lift or a throw. Take the second one as an illustration. Forces arise due to interaction. And here we have interaction between objects. So we know that for a force to come into existence, two, at least two objects need to interact. Child develops this understanding. He can apply this knowledge, this understanding in a new context. For example, if I'm looking at making a garland and so you have the needle, you have thread, you have the flowers and you have your hand. So how many objects are interacting? These are four objects which are interacting. Therefore, how many forces are coming into existence here? Let the child analyze. So you have understand, apply, analyze as well in here. Now, let's come down to the lesson plan. Now, this is again the format that is prescribed by an iOS for you. And the lesson plan would comprise certain important components and they are the teaching points. So you need to extract the teaching points. Teaching points are standalone statements which are meaningful. And these teaching points, they give direction to you to write your learning outcomes. And your whole lesson is in fact driven by your learning outcomes. What is the pre-existing knowledge or the previous knowledge of the learners? What are the learning resources that you would make use of in instruction? And what are the teaching learning uh, strategies or procedures that you would make use of in the learning encounter? So the structure of the lesson plan would include introduction, development, closure, assessment and homework. So a lesson plan is very important for day-to-day -day teaching. The teacher needs a plan so that uh, he can put into action the whole plan that was designed or developed based on the learning outcomes. Remember, we design a learning plan based on what we want the students to do at the end of you know, a teaching period. So be very careful and remember that a lesson plan is our guide. Even till date, I make use of a lesson plan. So one or several lesson plans may be written for a given subunit. Make it a habit. Lesson plans specify the content, the learning outcomes, the previous knowledge, the learning resources, the methods, assessment activities, homework and references. How do lesson plans help a teacher? A lesson plan is a day-to-day -day guide for a teacher. He or she may be, whether he or she is experienced or not, it is a guide for a teacher. It stimulates self-reflection. It's through self-reflection that the level of a teacher can be raised. Because when we execute a lesson plan, we know how well it has gone about. We reflect on it. And through this reflection, it tells us that whether it has gone on well or it has not. Now, the assessment that is conducted also provides valuable student feedback to us based on which we can modify our lesson plans. They reveal the level at which the teacher makes learners to interact with science. Whether you are operating at the very basic level of remember or whether you are operating at the level of lower order thinking skills that comprises remember, understand, apply or are they operating at a higher level that is the level of analyze, evaluate and create. So in this session we have looked at what we are expected to be doing as teachers. And what we're expected to be doing is nothing but planning, systematic planning of our whole curriculum and how we would go about executing that curriculum. So planning, which is done at three levels, that is at the level of the unit plan, the annual plan and the lesson plan. Thank you very much.